Hi guys, hi guys. Um, so we're gonna have a look at inventory for the two weeks, um, week four and week five. Um, it's it's quite an important section, and uh, it comes out it's every year in your final exam, and and so uh, there's basically the important thing is uh, valuation of inventory. That's what valuation of closing stock and all of that. So that's what we're gonna focus on methods of valuing stock. There are two most common methods is um, first in first out and weighted average method. So this shouldn't be shocking to you. We've done it last year towards the end of the year when we were planning for metric. And uh, I'm just gonna basically recall the stuff to you. And uh, so first in first out method and weighted average method. Uh, and then you'll also another one is called spot identification method, which comes out now and then, but not all the time, but I've got it on the slides here to help you. Um, so, uh, you know, this is such a fantastic uh, a PowerPoint. It just teaches you how to calculate closing stock and uh, it gives you the step. So the first in first out method is determine or the most important thing is look for the closing stock units. You need the closing stock units. And then once you get the closing stock units, which I'm going to do an example now on the slides, uh, the closing stock units, once you've got that, then you use that to uh, value your stock and you'll value it according to the most recent purchase. Uh, and, uh, and, and, and if it, if there's not enough in the recent purchase, then use the second most recent purchase. So let's have a look at uh, the example done here. And, um, if you, if you have a look at this particular, they want you to value the stock according to, um, the, uh, uh weighted average, I mean, um, first in, first out method. Um, and, uh, so I just want to try and get this. All right. So first and foremost, what is my closing stock units? And if I look here, end of the year, this is beginning end of the year, 145 units. That is step one. And I've got it there. The next step is to now value the stock first in first out. Now set to you value it according to the most recent purchase, meaning the latest purchase. May is early in the year, August is early, December is the most recent purchase or latest, but there's only 90 units. So this is 145. So I'll use 90 units of the unit price of this December purchase. But the problem here, guys, is you need to be careful is um, this uh, particular unit price uh, it also has carriage. So what you do is when you're in the situation like this and it didn't give the carriage per unit, take the carriage, divide it by that unit purchase for that purchase of December, which I've done here. And it gives you 125 Rand per unit carriage for this purchase of uh, December. And so the actual uh, uh, price per unit is the uh, carriage one uh, plus the unit price uh, and it comes to four five seven five per unit then uh, you look on the next slide and I've got the calculations on there uh, explaining how we will get it and so 90 remember now 90 is used we use the most recent purchase but we've got 145 so there's a remaining 55 units that remaining 55 units used from the second most recent purchase which is August and then we'll use 55 units of this. So it'll be the 4,750, but we work out the unit price, 15,000 divided by 20, 120, and then we add it to 4,750, which you'll see in our next slide. Um, it will be there, uh, uh, you know, uh, yeah. And uh, so uh, I've, I've copied over onto this uh, 4,575, but it's not, that is only for, um, the 90 units and the remaining so closing stock calculation 90 was used from the most recent and we'll use 55 from the other now you'll see I already calculated it to be 4875 what I've done is how I got 4875 is I took um, uh, 15,000 and I divided it by 120 15,000 um, divided by 120 uh, to get the the carriage and i've noticed the carriage is the same throughout 125 so you add 125 to uh, 4750 and it gives you 4875 um, uh, which is this amount here 
and we times it by 55 because remember we can only value stock for 145 because that's closing units and then so 90 will be for the 4575 and I get 411750 and then 55 units for the 4875 purchase which was in August 2nd most recent and it's 268 and you just add these two amounts and it gives you 679875 closing stock value so that's about it it's easy if there's no carriage then all good to you, you don't have to stress uh, but if there is carriage you must get the unit price of the carriage and then add it to the original unit price like we did here the unit price for carriage is 125 add it to this original unit price and multiply the units I hope the first in first start was straightforward. The weighted average method is much, it's also easier. Um, step one is the same. Get your closing units. Um, and then step two, we value stock um, on, on average price. So you take your opening stock random amount total plus total purchases random amount and divide it by opening stock units plus total purchase units because you want to get average rand per unit or average cost per unit uh, and, and then all you do is take the, clo uh, the closing stock units from step one and multiply it to what you got in step two so I've got a practical example here and uh, they want us to um, use weighted average so step one get the closing unit stock on hand 31st May you can see here in 31st May 3,350 units. Now I just got to work out the weighted average cost per unit, which is a RAND value. And I use my formula as I've got here. And I take my opening stock RAND amount, stock on hand at the beginning of the year, 107,500 plus total purchases RAND amount. There's the purchases. And they've given us a total purchases of 768,400. And then you add them up and then under that you're going to divide opening stock units is 3800 plus total purchase units 19250 one thing you must just bear in mind is sometimes they'll have returns so just minus the returns from here uh, the rand amount and minus the return units at the bottom in 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 those particular cases so i've taken it over same calculation and I divided it and I, it came to 38 Rand per unit. So this is the weighted average cost per unit. Now I'll just take my closing units, which I got in step one from here, 3,350 times 38 Rand, 127,500. That's how I value closing stock using weighted average. Uh, I hope that was straightforward and um, then we just go on to a few more slides what if closing stock units is not given and you're looking all over and you can't and it's got a question mark take the opening units plus what you purchased minus any units returned and minus any sale or units that you sold and it will give you your closing stock units um, spot identification method i mentioned earlier all you do is you're taking closing stock times the original price you paid for it in other words times the purchase price and that's how you get the closing stock using spot identification method all right so you can see jim carrey here i mean rather not jim carrey eddie murphy always coming to my mind jim carrey but uh, eddie uh, murphy how will you know if stock is stolen mm. so this is the following calculation you take your opening unit plus what you purchased, which what should have been in the business, minus anything returned, and minus the unit you sold. That will tell you what unit should have been left over. And then you compare that calculation to uh, uh, what you actually got. Like, for example, here, and I'm just saying uh, the closing stock units is 3,350, but if you did this, calculation here and you got 3200 but they saying 3350 then you know stock has been stolen it must match uh, if it doesn't match then stock has been stolen uh, these questions come up quite often uh, you can use this uh, you know to help you and then um, yeah so uh, that's that's uh, common questions that you will see in an exam is uh, calculation of cost of sales using periodic method. Just follow this here, same process, and you'll be able to get your cost of sales. Um, and remember, 
uh, gross profit is equal to sales minus uh, cost of sales. Uh, so this is how you get cost of opening stock plus purchases plus carriage minus returns minus closing stock will give you uh, opening stock uh, sorry cost of sales and then purchases any purchases plus your creditors if you bought on credit minus anything you donated minus drawings of stock will give you your purchases all right cost of sales done and then gross profit is equal to sales minus cost of sale if they ask you for gross profit percentage you take the gross profit divided by cost of sales times 100 it's the same thing as markup percentage and then lastly they'll i see this question come out quite often um calculate stock holding period or how many how long stock will will it uh, in days will it take for stock to be sold you just take closing stock which uh, uh, now closing stock not the units the amount the actual amount value that you calculated divided by the cost of sales value times 365 and it will tell you how long stock will be lasting in the business all right so i hope um, that was helpful um your week work um week four is just um three activities is quite intense um, do it to the best of your ability. The answer books are loaded on Google Classroom. And in week five, June on the 15th of May is another three. And uh, so it's the same process, same stuff, um, nothing different. Um, and just follow through and enjoy inventory. We only got literally two sections to complete. Our syllabus will be done um, looking from what i see our syllabus should be done mid-june and then we've got five months to do revision all right god bless you take care